The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ. Be born her. No. Let's start over. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ our Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. She is from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth. Her charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth. One holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food. And to one hope she presses, with every grace endued. Mid toil and tribulation, and tumult of her war. She waits a consummation, a peace forever war, till with a vision glorious, her longing eyes are blessed. When the great church victorious shall be a church at rest. Yet she on earth has union with God the three in one. And mystic sweet communion with those whose rest is one with all her sons and daughters who by the master's hand led through the deadly waters repose in Eden's land. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Martin's Chapel, you guys, and everybody that's watching today, welcome to St. Martin's Chapel. This is the fourth Sunday of Easter, and what a blessing it is to be here today, huh? Such a beautiful song, like Mark just said, you know, it's one of my all-time favorites. So today we're here to meet with Christ, amen? Amen. We're here to learn to be humble, to be holy. holy. We're here to learn how to follow God with all of our heart. And do what he says, whether we agree with it or not. Just do what he says. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's begin. In the name Amen. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. My brothers, my sisters, let us confess our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Most merciful Father, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done and by what I have failed to do. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I am truly sorry, and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me. And in your compassion, renew me with your spirit, so that cleansed of my sins and strengthened for your service, I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, pardon and absolve us of all of our sins, and through the power of the Holy Spirit bring us to everlasting life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayers. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. In your goodness, Father, guide and direct our journey home to you, that the flock of your own redeeming may reach the kingdom where the Good Shepherd has gone to prepare lush pastures for their wearied souls. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. This this is the fourth Sunday of Easter. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to the cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it is the name of Jesus Christ of Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. Yes. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial psalm. Okay, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Yes. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princesses. I will give you thanks to you for what you have answered me and have been my savior. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has been this done, has this been done. It is wonderful in his eyes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I will give you I will give thanks to you and for all you have answered me, and you have been my savior. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his kindness endures forever. A second reading. A reading from the first letter of Saint John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called to the children of God, yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What, we, what, shall, we, what we shall be has not been yet revealed. We do not know that when we, it is revealed that we shall be like him. 
for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Thank you, Mark. Beautiful. Good job. Great readings today, huh? <clears throat> so far. Yeah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, that they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. This is the Gospel of our Lord. God is good. Amen? Amen. Amen. All the time. All the time. <clears throat> I'd like to read a couple verses from the Gospel reading today. The Gospel of John, chapter 10. I want to read verses 11 through 14 as the basis for today's homily. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming, and leaves the sheep, and flees, and the wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling, and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known by my own. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most merciful and gracious God, thank you for this day, O Lord. Thank you for the ability and the opportunity to be here today in the chapel. Lord, I pray today for peace, for calmness in our souls, in our hearts, in our minds, that we can look to you, O Lord, and follow you, and not get caught up in so much stuff in this world around us, but find our respite in you lord jesus and we pray for all those that have gone before us into glory we pray for the repose of their souls and we also pray in thankfulness that they hear us they surround us and they're with us as the great cloud of witnesses and father bless the message we have today may we receive you O lord with open minds and open hearts we pray in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit Amen. Today what I'd like to do is talk about the sheep and the shepherd. That's what Jesus is talking about, isn't he? The sheep and the shepherd. Interesting text for today on this fourth Sunday of Easter. Today we hear about many sheep, but only one shepherd. Do you get that? Many sheep, but only one shepherd. And Jesus also said a committed shepherd knows the name of every single one of his sheep. He knows their names. Funny thing is, I was watching a movie the other night. It was a war movie. But a shepherd came into town. And he had all of his sheep. And as he stood there, he was talking to somebody. And he began to name all of his sheep. He knew who they all were. And he'd send his dog to go out and to round the sheep up. The shepherd leads the sheep to food. He leads them to water. 
and he sleeps with them out in the field. He takes care of them. He protects them. He watches over them, and he keeps them safe. And he'll even risk his own life when the sheep might be in danger. The shepherd would see the wolf coming, and he wouldn't take off running. Jesus said, that's not even a shepherd. That's just a hireling, someone that's hired to do the job. He's not invested into the sheep. So he would take off to save his own hide. But the shepherd that owns the sheep, he would take a staff and get between the enemy and the sheep to protect them, even if he had to die for them, to guarantee their safety. The problem is not one of us here in this chapel, and probably none of you out there watching, have any experience with sheep. We only listen to what we hear. The only way we have any connection with sheep is when we think about it in a spiritual way today. The sheep are us here today, out there today. The sheep are, are all of us, led by God. The shepherd is Christ Jesus himself. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And he leads us to pasture, which is the church. He leads us to the place we can be fed, which is the altar of the Holy Eucharist, along with reading, prayer, and the scriptures. He protects us from the devil, doesn't he? And his pack of ravenous devils and wolves. He even laid down his life for each and every one of us. And when we wander off and go astray, what does he do? Comes and gets us. He doesn't just wait for us to change our mind and turn around and come back. That may never happen. He goes out to find us. In John 10, 11, Jesus said these words, I am the good shepherd. He claimed that. He owned it. He said, this is me, the good shepherd. And then in John 10, 15, which is a verse after our text, he says, and I lay down my life for the sheep. One shepherd, many sheep. The sheep live, the shepherd has to lay down his life. So why does Jesus call himself the good shepherd? Well, one reason is because he is the owner of the sheep. None of us belongs to himself, St. Paul says. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. Whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. So we have to realize Jesus owns us. Another reason he's the good shepherd is that he never flees away from us. He doesn't see us in danger and take off. He doesn't see us wandering away and say, go ahead, knock yourself out. He doesn't do any of those things. He never flees away from the sheep. And when the wolves of this life, the wolves of this life, enter in to try and attack us, he intervenes. Right. He steps in between us and the temptation. Temptations to wander away from Jesus. Temptations to worry about all the uncertainties of this life. The temptations to think we're better and above somebody else. The temptations to try other things other than Christ. I heard somebody just the other day a lady talking to her friend, she goes, you should try Jesus. Oh, really? I didn't know Jesus was something we just kind of give a trial run to and try it out. You don't try them out as like you're trying out some shoes. You know, you follow Christ. Jesus doesn't flee from us. And he gets between us and what tries to turn us away from him. So his desire is that none of us perish. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's God's desire that none of us should perish. What do I mean? I don't mean die. We're all going to die. Every one of us is going to die. But his desire is that none of us perish spiritually. None of us perish in hell. But we'll all go to heaven one day. That's God's desire. And everybody says to me in their great wisdom, well, Father, then why does this guy, you chose to go there? Because right. he gave you a way out. And you don't want to follow it. 
So that's on you. He owns us. And he put our he puts our faith in us so we can follow him and join the fold. The fold of the flock of Jesus is the best place to be, isn't it? And the fold of the flock of Jesus is the best place to be. It's the only place to be for eternal security. You know, we may look out and see greener grass. But guess what? It's just different grass. It's not always greener. It's just different grass. But one thing I learned to be true is that green grass away from us, away from the flock of God, is just old dried up grass that's not going to do you one bit of good. You know, there's a reason. There's no reason to, gr to grasp for something new to fill us. There's no reason to reach out and try different things when Jesus is everything we already need. And he fills us with everything of who he is. See, when we feel empty, when you feel empty, what should you do? Get close to Christ, huh? Exactly. Get close to Jesus when you feel empty. When worries begin to take over, what should you do? Get close, Get close to Jesus. Amen. How about this one? When you feel lonely, what should you do? Get close to Jesus. Exactly. Don't try to get close to other people. Don't try to go satisfy that emptiness by shopping or spending money or doing something else. Get close to Christ because he will fill you up. Let him fill. Let him fill this mind. You get the picture? I hope so. You know, in Psalm 145, the psalmist writes, O Lord, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Nice. He satisfies our desires. The birds, the dogs, the horses, all of creation, he satisfies their desire. He satisfies our desire. You know, there's many facsimiles out there that we may think come from the hand of God. That's where discernment comes in. We may think these things come from the hand of God, and we get wrapped up in them, and they get us all wrapped up, and eventually they smother us, destroy us, and choke out our faith, and we fall away from God. These things out there keep us filled for a while, and then comes the day they drop us flat, on our face. And we've all been there, haven't we? We've all tried people. We've tried marriage. We've tried relationships. We've been in love. We've gotten knocked down flat on our face. So the question is, if we know these things will knock us down flat on our face, why do we step back in? <laughs> why do we step back in? So I'm warning everybody today against going back out there again when we should really be doing what, Mark? Getting close to God. Yeah, getting close to God. You know, it's so easy to let our emotions get in the way of our faith, isn't it? You know, the scriptures call us to stay close to Jesus, as we've been saying. And he will fill our souls, fill our souls to stay close to him so he can lead us to salvation. Jesus said the thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Now this abundant life Jesus talks about, listen up, is not one filled with people, riches, possessions, health, wealth, and prosperity. He's not talking about that. A lot of preachers want to say, come to Jesus and you're going to get this. No. Come to Jesus and your sins are wiped away. Amen? Amen? That's more important. But he's talking about a life of freedom. Freedom here in our soul. Freedom to follow him. Freedom to not be tangled up in our old lifestyle. Freedom that we can walk away from everything else and be close to Christ. Acts 4.12 says there's salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. That was one of our readings for today. 
And the name that's given us is Jesus. Only Jesus saved. Only Jesus fills us. Only Jesus leads us to heaven because only Jesus is the Christ. He is the Savior. Only Jesus will never abandon us or ever forsake us, Hebrews tells us. And above all, and most important of all, is that the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He lays it down. You know, in our society today, this whole concept of sacrificing, laying down a life, it's lacking, isn't it? Yeah. It's lacking. To sacrifice means to give away something for the good of another. That's what it means to sacrifice. To give away something for the good of another. Listen carefully. It does not mean to look for what others can give me. Right. You know, we want them to sacrifice for me. <laughs> what about me sacrificing for them? Huh? We look for others, what they will give up for me. But it should be just the opposite. What will I give up? For somebody else. A little bit of my time. A little bit of my money. A little bit of whatever. My food. For the benefit of another. That's what it means to sacrifice. Our good shepherd Jesus. Shows us this concept very clearly. Jesus said these words. This is why the father loves me. You ever think about that? Why the father loves Jesus. What do you come up with when you think about that? You can answer. It's okay. What do you think? Unconditional. Yeah, okay. What do you think? Why does the Father love Jesus? It's his son. Yeah. Jesus gave the answer. Here's what he said. Because I laid down my life. That's what he said. The Father loves Jesus because he lays down his life. His life. He sacrificed. He said, I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it up again. Nobody took Jesus' life from him. He laid his life down. Right. He let them kill him. Had he not let them, it would not have happened. He laid down his life. So, now, here's the practical side. We must follow him wherever he leads. He laid down his life for me. Will I lay down my life for him? Hmm. Whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Amen? Amen. You see, heaven is the final destination to spend eternity. That's where God wants us to be. In the meantime, we live in this temporal world. Eter or heaven is eternal. This world is temporal. And we're here on a journey called life. As good as it is, as bad as it gets, <laughs> as much as we enjoy it, as much as we hate it, life is a journey with all its joys and sorrows. But we are to follow Jesus in the midst of all of that and stay on his side. We have to sort things out, always keeping Christ before us. The Apostle Paul says in Colossians, keep your mind focused on things above, huh? not on the things of this earth. And that means we won't get all down the rabbit hole when things aren't going well for us, nor will we get arrogant, cocky, and forget about God when we get things. Right. And things are going well for us. We always keep Christ there before us. How I wish Christians today would take serious what it means to follow Jesus. You know, I ask Christians all the time, especially in the prisons when I'm there, what we are saved, now what? Jesus came to do what? He came to take us to heaven. Yeah, what else? And then everybody looks at me real quietly, like a deer in the headlights. What else? He came not only to take us to heaven, he also came to lead us through this life till we get to heaven. Salvation's a process. As Jesus leads us through all the ups and downs of this life, he knows us. 
and he knows us so we can know him. The good shepherd knows the sheep and the sheep follow him. So we can follow him and know him and be part of his flock, the holy church, the fellowship of believers. My heart goes out to those believers who say, we don't need the church today. Well, folks, yes, we do. Because if we're not in church, who knows where we're going to go, right? And who knows what we're going to believe. The sheep will do what the shepherd tells them. In actuality, a real shepherd with his real sheep, he gives them commands and they do what they're supposed to do. Jesus gives us commands and we should do what he tells us to do. The sheep get into trouble when they wander away from the shepherd. How often do we get in trouble when we wander away from the shepherd? But we have to follow Jesus closely and stay in fellowship with him. Stay in fellowship with him. And that doesn't mean to just say, I'm going to read my Bible and that's all I need. No, that's part of what we need. We need to come to Mass. We need to be in church. We need other believers, other Christians to strengthen us and we can strengthen them. Other sheep that we can fellowship with are the true church, the true church of God. Jesus Christ is the good shepherd, my friends. Let's follow him and lay down our life for him as he laid down his life for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you for this message you've given us. I pray, O oh Lord, that it made sense, that it sunk into our hearts, that we can chew on it a little bit, and we can follow you as a sheep should follow the shepherd and always keep you before us. We pray, O oh Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together in the words of the Nicene Creed that we have before us. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all the ages, God of God, light of light, True God of true God, begotten, not created, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who in the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
Let us give honor and glory to the, to the Lord Jesus, the Master of life. Christ will raise us with his saving power. Let us praise the Lord with our morning prayers. <clears throat> praise to the Lord forever. You are the, you are the high priest. You are the mediator of the new and perfect covenant. You nurse us abundantly, and you shall call us into your glorious presence. As our praises ascend to the Lord, so too may our prayers for the church and for the people we love. After every intention, as follows with, hear us, O Lord, your mercy is great. For a recreation of life in the hearts and minds of those seeking meaning and truth. Hear us, Hear us O Lord, your Be mercy is great. Free. For strength to the manifest in the lives of those who doubt doubts are strong. Hear us, O Lord. Hear us, O Lord, your mercy is great. For your mercy to be shown in the midst of illness and suffering. Hear, Hear us, O Lord, Lord, your mercy is great. For your openness to walk within the Spirit and to meet the needs of the world. Hear us, O Lord, your mercy is great. And for a fresh spring of priestly and religious vocations to well up in the church. Hear us, O Lord, your mercy is great. In the power of the Spirit, we will lift you in needs and intentions that are close to our hearts. Father, we pray today, especially for healing for Abbot Bernard, who is suffering physically, strengthen him, bring healing upon him. And we pray also for Bishop Todd, who is struggling with the health of his father. Watch over them and grant them, O oh Lord, your peace in this time of trial. Lord, we just pray for uh, those who are fighting the abortion fight. Lord, we pray for the preborn children and for the mothers who might be going in for an abortion, that they would have a change of heart and that you would be with them. You'd watch over them, Lord. And this has been a scourge in our nation. It's not a good thing. And we also pray for our, our Christian brothers and sisters to, who are throughout the world are being persecuted. And that they, we pray for their persecutors too, Lord, that they would see that Jesus is, that these men have walked with Jesus and they would have a change of heart. We pray for the uh, protection of their families and pray for their monetary uh, blessings and financial blessings of their families, Lord. And if you would just watch over these men, give them strength to endure. And we just, we thank you this day, Lord, that and we also pray that we would know the truth, because the truth shall set us free, Lord, that we'd be seekers of truth and truth only, Lord, that we put aside all lies and all garbage, and there is only one true God, and that we know who he is, Yeshua. We thank you. Father God, thank you. Just pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord that People just start talking to each other. Yes. That we start becoming our brother's keeper. Yes. We always always have to agree with each other, but we can at least respect each other. And we're all here to benefit each other. I prayed for my uncle Herman. He was a great man. I was very honored to be able to go up there and 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 be part of the service with him and to see my family. And I think the human race is our family. I mean, we've just gotten away from all decency and, and brotherhood. I mean, it's really gotten to be, to be an epidemic. We just stopped talking to each other. That's not where, even if we disagree with the people that we talk to, we need to embrace them, encourage them, mm -hmm. and to compromise with them. Um, just pray for the people in Gaza and all the homelessness and all the people are really struggling and all the people are hungry throughout the world. That's just not good. We should be able, this world is just needs to somehow come together. And all the people in um, also Afghanistan, 
they're, they're having a really rough time. So God, try to put your, shine, your light on them mm -hmm. and make them in that country whole again. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing our prayers. Grant your grace and peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Blessed is Yahweh our God in the universe. You bring forth grain from the earth. May this gift of yours become for us our communion in the body of Christ. Blessed be God forever. created and yet we're wonderfully renewed the dignity of our human nature through the water and wine mingled here grant us sharing the divine life of Jesus who humbled himself to share in our humanity blessed are you Yahweh our God king of the universe may you bring forth the fruit of our may this gift of yours become for us our communion in the blood of Christ as it be God for us Father, receive us as we come to this table and be pleased with the sacrifice that we offer with our humble hearts and contrite hearts. Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of the great compassion out the stain of my sin, wash me clean from my guilt, purify me from my sin, and then seal my lips, O Lord, that I may give you praise. Let us pray, my beloved brothers and sisters, that the sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty, and may the sacrifice come from our hands to the praise and glory of your name, for our good and for the good of all this holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Yeah, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. <clears throat> Father, all powerful and ever living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. Yet we do so with greater joy than ever in this Easter season, when Christ became our Paschal sacrifice. From his death, life has arisen. From his resurrection, salvation comes forth. The agony of the cross has yielded for us the remedy of love. His commendation is turned into our triumph, and his bitter wounds have become for us an inexhaustible source of healing. 
For in giving up all that was his and embracing death, he has ensured that we will live forever. Therefore, in the universe echoing the Easter joy, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all your saints of every time and place, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> Father most holy, you are worthy of praise, for in Jesus Christ, your Son, you revealed the depth of your love. Through him, we have, you have liberated us from our slavery to sin and death, and made of us a family where your boundless gifts are revealed. Invited by his love, we have gathered here at this altar, and we give you thanks for these gifts of our, your creation, this bread and this wine. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. On the night before his death, while at supper with his disciples, Jesus took bread. He said a blessing, he broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take this all of you and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took a cup filled with wine. And giving thanks, he blessed it, then he gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, as we celebrate this Eucharist, we enter more deeply into the saving work of your Son, the Good Shepherd, who leads us along life-giving ways, the Lamb who takes away our sins, the Victor who lives and reigns forever at your side. At his intercession, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we may become a living sacrifice, wholly dedicated to your service. May the same Spirit make us one, one in faith we profess, one with those who minister to your church, and especially Todd our Archbishop and Bernard our Abbot General, one with those who sorrow, one with those who rejoice, one with the sick and the suffering and the dying, one with our, those who have departed, our brothers and sisters, whom we commend to your perfect love. When we falter, Father, and our steps leave your path, Bring us back to your ways with gentle compassion, so that at the last day, together with Mary, the mother of God, Joseph, her husband, and all the saints, we may take our place among your great cloud of witnesses, united with you for all eternity, through the merits and mercy of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, our living Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, to you, God the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, the only eternal God, for these gifts of your holy body.
now taught by the Savior's command, and formed by the word of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from all that is evil. Grant us peace in our day, and your mercy keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And through the Eucharist, grant us peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to all who with faith receive. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. By the will of the Father and through the working of the Spirit, your death, O Lord, has brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your commands, and never let me be parted from you. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Today, as we receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ here in the chapel, my, my prayer is for those out there that can't be here, that you receive Christ into your heart in a very real and spiritual way. Let's receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father, steadfast in love, watch over the people you have redeemed. 
And grant that all who share in the Eucharist may come to inherit your everlasting kingdom. For there is only one flock, and we will know only one shepherd, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and always. Amen. Amen. week so it's good to be here this week uh, and sadly I'll mention it to everybody out there I'm having surgery on my foot on Thursday so I we won't be having mass next week Sunday most likely um, we'll see I'll let you guys know I wouldn't plan on it but I won't be driving that's for sure so anyhow God's will will be done amen, amen. you know I was thinking this week we're always blessed by God. No matter how hard the day might seem. No. no matter what we lose at any given time. We're blessed by God. No matter how much our health suffers and fades. And the things we have to go through. We're always blessed by God. All three of us guys here have something we struggle with. Maybe several things physically we struggle with. Huh? Mentally, spiritually, all these things. We're still blessed by God. And no matter if God pours riches upon us, we're still blessed by God. You know, I hate it when people say, I'm waiting for God to bless me. <laughs> they already missed the boat. Or there's so many churches advertising, blessing service, anointing service, all that stuff. We're already blessed by God. Right. Healing service. You know, go to the hospitals and heal people. Let them be blessed too. Well, my brothers and sisters, let's just know we're blessed by God because He's our Savior and we're going to be with Him in heaven one day. Amen? Amen. Amen. That being said, let's go in peace to truly love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.